Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Supervisor Lisa Bartlett, who's here to talk about safety and the holidays, as well as some other things that are going on for your liking and for you to take advantage of. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining me today. Great to be here. So I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. I did, and, and you? I did. It was great. And, uh, you know, I tell you, those turkey uh, comas just make me too tired. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump right in because, you know, this, we've got the holidays coming up and I know we just had Thanksgiving. So I'm sure people are really anxious to get back together with people and they want to have some celebrations, but there are some definite things to take into consideration. Yes. So as you know, the governor has put on the brakes a little bit relative to, um, a safer blueprint for the economy. And Orange County has now transitioned back from the red tier to the purple tier. So it's a more restrictive tier. Um, due to the increase in COVID cases and hospitalizations, which we are tracking very carefully. So statewide overall, we have more COVID positive cases and more hospitalizations resulting from those cases. So we need to keep track of those numbers because we always want to ensure that for public safety and health, we maintain a surge capacity within our hospital and healthcare system. Really important. So in the event um, your, you know, your aunt or uncle or brother or sister has a heart attack and needs to go to the hospital, that we've got hospital beds available for everyone who needs a hospital bed. So we're monitoring things um, very carefully at the county level and um, the governor and his staff are monitoring things at the state level. Orange County is doing extremely well relative to other counties. We still have a lot of hospital um, surge capacity and the ability to staff hospital beds. So we're doing very well as a county, but some of our surrounding counties aren't doing quite as well. So we are also uh, keeping track of what's happening in our surrounding counties because relative to the hospital bed capacity, that's based on a regional basis. So LA County, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Diego County, we're in a, a South you know, region down here in Southern California. Right. And um, we were doing so well for so many months. Um, we were in the red tier for almost two months consistently, whereas our surrounding counties were already in the purple tier. Um, I want to give significant credit to all of our residents and our businesses. They've done a tremendous job um, maintaining health and safety protocols, you know, wearing um, face covering, social distancing, using hand sanitizer. The businesses, the restaurants and retail businesses that I've visited have done a marvelous job maintaining all of those health and safety protocols, which are so important right now. And I think that's why it's a little bit frustrating for us because we're back in the purple tier and yet um, our residents and our businesses are doing everything that they need to do to maintain a high level of health and safety for Orange County. So we just have to continue to be very vigilant. Um, the Centers for Disease Control has issued some guidelines for holiday celebrations. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the website. Um, that's the cdc.gov website relative to coronavirus and take a look at those specific guidelines. But I just appreciate, as always, the residents in Laguna Woods doing such a, a great job of adhering to those guidelines. And that's why the COVID numbers are really low in, in Laguna Woods relative to some of the other Orange County cities. And just thank you for being so vigilant because it is making a difference. Yeah, I mean, they're frustrated, but they are getting the job done, like you said. Now, something that uh, you know, they're just coming off of celebrations uh, for Thanksgiving. And, you know, some people probably had multiple people there. And so there are concerns, I think, going forward as to how that's going to translate into the numbers that we're seeing so far with COVID-19, because that was the biggest fear is that everyone was going to get together and have a big gathering. So over the course of the next week to two weeks, I'm imagining that the CDC, as well as you guys, are going to really be on top of the numbers because you want to see if things do spike again. That is correct. Um, my thoughts are relative to the spike in COVID numbers that it's not from the individual residents walking the streets, um, going into the retail shops and into the restaurants, but more so it's the gatherings, the small to medium-sized gatherings in private 
um, facilities, private residences that are causing um, the spike in COVID. So with the holidays um, you know, upon us, we want to make sure that be really, really careful. If you do go to a holiday gathering to wear your face covering and adhere to all of the health and safety protocols because we want to keep you safe and everyone around you safe as well. You know, you wonder if it makes sense for people to, before you go to a gathering like that, is maybe go get a COVID-19 test prior and then go. Is that something advisable? Um, if you want to be extra cautious, absolutely. The county has set up super testing sites in Anaheim and at the Costa Mesa Fairgrounds. You can drive through, get tested. Um, there is no charge. So we will, they, they'll take insurance if you have insurance, but if you don't, you will still allow um, to be tested. Oh, and is it only in those two locations? We have several other locations countywide that do not charge for testing. Um, we had a free COVID testing in right in Laguna Woods uh, some time ago, and we hope to have something like that in the future as well, along with flu shots and then hopefully a vaccine down the road. Right. Oh, that would be awesome, especially because when we have Christmas coming up, maybe that is an option for some people to be able to do that. But then again, you know, you're, you're positive or negative one day, and then you can be positive the next day, which is so freaky about this whole thing. That, that is correct. You know, when you get a COVID test and you get the results the next day, it's just a snapshot in time. Yeah. So that's why there are individuals that if they're out and about in the community, they, they will literally go in once a week or once every other week and just get tested. So they know that when they're delivering groceries to their mother or father, that, um, you know, they are COVID free. And it's just really important to be extra vigilant right now, especially with flu season upon us. Um, that really complicates things to an even greater extent relative to uh, COVID. Exactly, exactly. All right, so we'll, we'll move on to the next thing because you've already talked much about the CDC guidelines, which we've all been pretty much touting for quite some time now. And of course, vigilance is definitely uh, on the forefront. Uh, you know, talk about one of the slides that you had here about stopping the spread of germs, um, where it's cleaning and disinfecting frequently. You know, at one point they said that that's not really where it's transferring is through touch points. It's more of a breathing and and face to face. Is that still the situation? I think we have to be extra cautious um, when we're out of our homes. So if you're going into a restaurant take your disinfectant wipes with you because the restaurants have done a great job cleaning, but you really wanna make sure yourself that where you're seated, that area is clean. And so I take my hand sanitizer spray and disinfectant wipes literally everywhere I go, um, just to be extra safe. Could you imagine, I, I swear, I'd walk in with, into a restaurant with my big old can of Lysol and just spray it all. <laughs> In fact, um, you know, people traveling too on an airplane, if you do choose to do that, that is one thing for sure, because who knows how many areas that they have gotten with their sanitization. So for sure, I'm bringing all that Clorox wipes on the plane. That's one thing for sure. Um, okay, so after being in your home and isolated, uh, a lot of things are happening to many people, and it's not just our seniors, um, we're talking about depression, anxiety, really tough stuff. What are some of the things that the county is doing to help that? We're doing a couple of things. We've established a mental health services hotline, which is 714-991-6412. And they can also call our COVID hotline, which is 714-834-2000. We want to make sure that everybody has access during this time of year where it gets dark early and they may, maybe they haven't gone out in weeks. Um, we don't want people to feel pressure and feel uncomfortable um, in their home environments and getting stressed. Um, so we want to make sure they've got access to hotlines. They can call, talk to a live person at the other end of the phone who can help them in a number of ways. So, you know, don't be afraid to pick up the phone if you're feeling a little bit anxious or you're feeling stressed. Um, we also have, for those that are getting very stressed, we have uh, established at the county level an Office of Suicide Prevention. And we want to make sure that for, for people that are hitting that wall where they just don't know where to turn, that they've got access at the county with services that we can deploy you know, immediately for them. We want to make sure everyone has got that, that safety net right now because it's so important um, right now with so many different things going on. We don't want people to get stressed 
and, and do something that, um, you know, they shouldn't do. Well, yes. And then when the flip-flopping happens too, it makes it even more frustrating because here you're thinking you're seeing it light at the end of the tunnel and, oh, wait, 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 no, we're not. And then that can be super frustrating, I'm sure, because you get your hopes up and then, you, you know, then they get squashed. So great stuff. I'm glad you guys were able to put that together. Now, the nutritional gap program is still going on and you, um, you have, they have availability still. Do, do they, are they just going to do that until they run out or they just keep making more food? The Nutrition Gap Program, which is available to seniors 55 and over, is a program that will be in place until the end of December. So we encourage everyone who's interested to sign up, especially during these cold weather months where in the purple tier you can't have uh, in dining and restaurants and it's just outdoor dining, which can be cold um, depending on you know, the weather from day to day. So we want to make sure that um, people take advantage of the Nutrition Gap Program. Um, we have um, a number of areas where you can get information um, directly at the county. Another program we have at the county that's been a great success, and it runs through the end of December, seniors 55 and over, um, contact 211-OC or 949-646-4357. We have already distributed through this program um, 2,250 food boxes and 22,800 meals from Ruby's right in my own district here down in South County. So it's a great program for you to get engaged and be able to actually get access to a lot of meals so you don't have to prepare them yourself and we get things right to your doorstep. So again, 211 or 949 646 Four three five seven. So, what's the difference between the food boxes and then the Ruby's meals? All right. So, basically, through the Nutrition Gap program, you're going to get food boxes, and you're also going to get frozen meals from Ruby's Diner. Okay. So, I, I just felt it was really best to have a combination of things for the South County residents. Right. Um, not everyone um, has the ability to um, go to the grocery store right now or to prepare meals for themselves. And the great thing about this program is you're getting a lot of great um, food products from uh, Second Harvest Food Bank. And then also you're getting the frozen meals prepared from Ruby's Diner. So it's been a really great partnership. And I thank both Second Harvest Food Bank and Ruby's Diner, but it's a great program for our seniors. You just take the frozen meals, pop them in your freezer, and then you can put them in the microwave whenever you want a, a good meal. Yeah. And in the food boxes, we have fresh fruits and vegetables, um, breads, pastas, and a lot of things that can really benefit our seniors. And how many do you get? Do you get like enough for a whole week or how does that, how many do you get? You either can sign up for a weekly or a bi-weekly. So once a week or once every two weeks, depending on how much storage you have in your uh, kitchen and in your freezer and refrigerator. That is awesome. I mean, that is just unheard of. So that is so great that you were able to get both of those to participate. I'm sure everybody loves having that. And so that's great that you're able to distribute that many. So thank you. That is so wonderful. Yeah. And well, it's, oh, and it's delivered right to the seniors' home. Oh, so you don't have to drive through anywhere to pick this up? No, it's not a food drive. Oh, this is a this is a program where the food boxes and frozen dinners are actually delivered right to your doorstep. Okay. And is there any limitations as to where you live? Like I know for our villagers, it's okay. But what if you live somewhere else? This program is available for everyone in the fifth district. Oh, wow. Okay. So all of the South County cities are eligible um, for this program. That is great. Wow. Thank you, Lisa. That is amazing. Well, what else do you have for us before we say goodbye? I mean, we're, we're looking at the December and the end of the year here. I can't believe it. One program that we've actually started, especially because we're moving back to the purple tier, is the outdoor dining grant program. Okay. So a lot of the restaurants, as you know, they want to stay in business and they want to maintain health and safety protocols for their diners. And so we establish a grant program where they can get access to funds and it's to buy sanitation supplies, um, personal protective equipment, you know, the face coverings um, for their workers. Mm -hmm. So we've got a number of things going on at the county, but this is one program that we just recently started. Um, the first thousand businesses that apply will get a thousand dollar grant. And as of yesterday, I think we had 
maybe 800 uh, restaurants signing up. Right. Well, you know, they're going to need, if they're going to do outdoor dining, they're going to need tents. Um, they're going to need heaters because it's not going to get any warmer. So I think that's awesome that you can provide that. In fact, um, where I live, there's a lot of that going on right now where they are getting the tents and stuff. So hopefully we can make this work for the whole rest of the month. Well, and we're hoping, fingers crossed, that our, our numbers stabilize and we'll be able to get back in the red tier and then once again be able to continue to open up our local economy. It's been really devastating for our local restaurants and our businesses. And you know, we relative to COVID, it's a balancing act. And while our numbers are increasing, um, the businesses have to shut down. And it's really unfortunate because I don't think personally that um, the businesses are the cause of the increase in COVID numbers, but they're getting penalized unfairly. And you know, we're continuing to work with the governor's office to, to make that point, to keep our businesses open and follow the health and safety protocols and get our economy back on track again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, there have been some protests as, as you've seen, I'm sure, and I'm sure you hear about things too, phone calls and what have you, but yeah, I mean, I'm with you. We, we really do wanna move forward and we don't wanna penalize these businesses because I'm just afraid by the time next year rolls around, they're not gonna be in business anymore. And that's just a shame. So thank you for all you do, Lisa. Maybe we'll talk to you before the next holiday. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much for having me today. And just want to wish everyone a happy holiday season and stay safe. All right, thank you. And we'll be right back after this.